31. Three key steps in gene transfer are shown below. Putting them in the right sequence, we would first have to remove the bacterial plasmid, treat both the plasmid and the host DNA with restriction enzymes to create sticky ends, and then to ligate those pieces together and to introduce them into the host cell. So that sequence would be 2 followed by 3 followed by 1. Answer C. Examine the image of a human blood smear below, which of the following gives the identity of the parts. Label 2 points to a leukocyte, a white blood cell. Label 1 to an erythrocyte, or red blood cell. And label 3 to the plasma. So therefore the answer is A. RNA primers are removed and replaced with DNA. This statement in reference to DNA replication in E. coli. Select the process and the enzyme associated with the statement. It is replication of DNA and the enzyme DNA polymerase 1 is responsible for replacing primers with DNA, whereas polymerase 3 is responsible for the bulk of the DNA replication itself, but polymerase 1 is the one that replaces the primers which get the replication going with pieces of DNA. Answer D. The part of a gene that codes for a protein is the expressed portion, or the exon, and several parts of genes do not code for proteins. They are referred to as introns. Proteins synthesized on bound ribosomes of the rough endoplasmic reticulum are sent to the Golgi apparatus, for it is these proteins that are exported from the cell, whereas those that are synthesized on free ribosomes are kept for use within the cell. Which of the following can be determined by the amino acid sequence of a protein? Well, the very amino acid sequence of a protein is its primary structure. And by knowing the primary structure, it is possible to work out all of the possible tRNA anticodons that could be used to make that protein during the process of translation. Bearing in mind that a particular protein could be coded for by more than one tRNA anticodon. While it might be possible to work out the tertiary structure of a protein given its primary structure, it would be impossible to determine its quaternary structure, which involves an aggregation or a bringing together of several polypeptide chains. So therefore the answer would have to be 1 and 2 only, which would leave us with a choice of D. Which of the following would not cause a conformational change in the active site of an enzyme? Competitive inhibitors fit into the active site and do not cause conformational changes, whereas changes in pH would bring about changes in the distribution of ions, which could in turn change the structure of the active site. Similarly, a change in temperature would lead to breakage of bonds, and a non-competitive inhibitor, by binding to the so-called allosteric site, away from the active site, brings about stresses in the tertiary structure and thereby changes the makeup or the conformation of the enzyme's active site. So therefore, which of the following would not cause a conformational change? Answer A, a competitive inhibitor. The final product of glycolysis is a 3-carbon compound, pyruvic acid or pyruvate. The final acceptor of hydrogen in aerobic respiration is always oxygen, for this is the purpose of oxygen in aerobic respiration. Without it, all of the reactions of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport system would grind to a halt. In the electron micrograph of a chloroplast below, select the label that points to the site of the light independent reactions of photosynthesis. Light independent, sometimes referred to as the dark reaction, requires no light, also known as the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle or the light independent reactions occur in the stroma of the chloroplast, C, whereas the Hill reaction or the light dependent reactions occur on the thylakoid membranes of the chloroplast. So the answer is C.